Right. I'm, I can't wait to get started. <laughs> oh man, we going. Seven, there you go, Father. Seven, all right. Well, welcome everybody. Man, we're here. Thank you all for coming. We're all coming together to reason, right? And to remind ourselves of who we are uh, by learning how to think so we can live well, right? And live the life that we want to live. So we are going to start it right off the box. Please share the screen. The first, yeah, the first link. I just put them in order. So that's easy. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Good. All right. So see it. Okay. All right. So here we go. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All right. So in the beginning was the word, right? Was the word. And the word, right, was God. Oh, and the word was with God, right? And the word was God. Okay. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if, if we know what God's name is, how would we rephrase that? It kind of says it in the second one, in the second sentence, right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, right? What does that mean? In the beginning was God. Okay. And, but in the beginning, what did it say even before God? What did it say? The word. The word. The word. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, meaning the word. So what does that mean? The word and God, what? Are the same. Are the same. So then what does that mean as it relates to you? Your word is God. Your word is God. Word is God. Word Your word is God. God. <laughs> Your word is God. Yeah. Your word, we talked about that yesterday in class. Now you see why I said what I said yesterday. Right? When I said my word, my word, my word, and then we said is God. Yeah. Your word is God. Your word is God. God is just a title. Right. We know God's name is I am. But God, when we use the word God, the title, we're saying we're essentially saying it's the highest level of authority. It's something that can do anything and everything. That's why we would pray to it, so to speak. Right. So now that we know what that the name of that the name, that person's name. Right. You say, oh, OK. The, so I am is the highest level of authority in my life. Well, what is I am? Consciousness. Right. So the word and consciousness are one. What you're aware of and what you say are one thing. You're always saying what you're aware of. You try to separate them. You think you can separate them, but you don't. You can't. Right. The word and God, the word, your word is God. Your word is the highest level of authority in your life. It's the highest level of authority in your life. The same was in the beginning with God. The same that the, they're the, the one. Those two are the same. All things were made by him. Well, who is it talking about? All things were made by him. Who is that? Who is that? What is it talking about? Consciousness. Okay. God. God. Oh, oh, and, oh. And, 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 say, and what else? The word. The word. All things are made by your word. See, when I say your word, we, I'm saying it that way on purpose because I want you to understand that your word is God. I'm not saying I'm not saying God and then you forget your word because that's why most of us are in the trouble we're in because we understand this concept of God, but we have no concept of our word. We have no concept of what we're saying. That's why we just say anything. Oh, I'm going to struggle. I'm going to get through it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get over it. What? You on top of it. If you know who you are. It's under you if you know who you are. It's easy work if you know who you are. But when we think we're something and God is something and our word is something else, we don't mind that we'll just say anything. Just like when, when we're immature in life, right? And we get away from our parents when we're kids and we do things away from our parents that we wouldn't with them. 
right? You made a little curse word slip out because you're 13, thinking you're cool, mm -hmm. thinking you're fresh. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even, you get within a block of your house and you get back to being religious all of a sudden, right? You tighten it up quick because you get away from something and you start doing something else. All things are made by your word. And without your word is not anything made that was made. Not a thing in your life has happened before you said it. Now, that might, that might seem a little, a little tricky, but let's back up. What does it take to say something? To Sean, I think that was Sean who said it. To Sean's point, what does it take to say something? Being conscious of it. Conscious. About or just consciousness itself, right? Doesn't matter what you say. You have to be conscious first to say anything, right? Yes. So now when you're conscious of something, you say what you're conscious of. But in order to say anything, you must first be conscious. That's why graveyard's quiet, right? There's no consciousness, nothing's happening, right? So all things are made by consciousness. Your word, because your word is nothing but the physical expression of what you're aware of being. You're always talking about what you're aware of being or what you're aware of happening, what's going on. Without this, nothing is made that was made. So in the beginning of every situation going on in your life is consciousness, the word, and God. All three of those are essentially what? What are all three of those? The same. The same. They are one. They're not even the same. Yes, they are the same. That's right. But I'm I'm trying to overemphasize that they are one. What you are aware of being, what you're saying, and God, all those are the same. What are they are? What are they? They are the highest level of authority. They are what you are worshiping, praying to, worshiping, believing in. That is what's protecting you, providing for you. That is what is making sure you get what it is you're talking about. All of those are the same. Your word, God, and consciousness are one. They are the same. Nothing is made without, without it was not anything made that was made because him is talking about God and God is talking about the word and the word is talking about consciousness, consciousness, God, and your word are the same consciousness. I am, and your word are the same. I am is conscious and conscious produces words. Consciousness produces words. When you think and speak, they're one. So when you think you can pray to God for money while you say, why am I always broke? That is an example of what? Double-mindedness. Double double-mindedness. Right? Of, of double-minded. It's a mistake. Yes, it is a mistake. But it's double. the mistake is what? Double-mindedness. See, in, 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 the, in the mind that we are when we are in our right mind, what does it say? There's no guilt or condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. In, in your highest level of mind, right, in the flesh form, in your highest level of mind, there's no condemnation there. So when we talk about sinning, yes. Well, what is sin? It means error. It means to miss the mark, right? It's a Greek word. It, it's a, it means to miss the mark. So the sin, where do we miss the mark? We miss the mark by thinking that we can ask God for one thing while we profess another. That's the sin. That is the mistake we've made. Because in the beginning was the word. In order to have a word, you must be conscious. And the word, consciousness, the word, and God are one. Consciousness was with the word, and the word was God. So consciousness, what you're aware of, your word, and God are one. Those are forming your experience as one thing, as the highest level of authority in your life. And what does it say? So it says all things were made and without, without this, right? Without this oneness, nothing was made that was made. Nothing was made that was made. Everything going on in your life is because of that. Because of your consciousness, your word, and I am. But those are one. They're not separate things. They're one. Just like you're one, but you may be a father and a supervisor and a husband. You may be a mother and a daughter and a niece. You may be, but you're still one being. So while it seems like they're doing different things, yeah, it's just different aspects of yourself, but it's one. They're all moving together as one. So just kind of like Michelle was saying before the call started, it's like, well, I can't be here and I can't be there, right? Because you can't be physically be in two different places. 
So yeah, while you're at work, you're a supervisor, but that doesn't mean you're not a father. If your child came up to see you, they would still call you dad. But so it's not that you're, it's not that you're a different being. You're just, you are just expressing a different aspect of this being, but it's not separate. So your word, God, and I am, right? Your word, God, your consciousness, your word, and God are one. All things are made this way. Without it, there's nothing made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. So in 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 your God and God, in your consciousness, and your word is life. That is your life. When I always tell you it's not positive thinking. You're not out here just saying things to feel good and sound good, so to speak. No, you're actually exacting or expressing or declaring and decreeing. You're making a statement. Because of who you are, you're always making a statement. But because we we consistently are forgetting who we are, then we just think we're just keeping it real. We're just telling it like it is. We're just being honest or being realistic. But that's in ignorance you think that. But that's not the truth. In lack of knowledge and lack of awareness we think that. But that's not the truth. Nothing was made without the word, the word that was God, the word that is God. Nothing was made without that. And that word cannot be expressed without consciousness. So without consciousness, the word and God, nothing gets made that is made. And in this, in that unity, in that unison, is life. And that life was the light of men, was the light of mind. This is what lights the world. Is your word, your awareness, and I and your and your and God, your consciousness. That's it. Everything that is happening, which you either call to you or for you, is because of this. There's not anything that was made without it. Right? Now, if you go down to um, if you go down to verse 10, right there, this is where this is where this is what happens to us. So he, now who is he talking about? When it says he, who is that? Yes, God? I am the same person, the same, not person, literally like we are like humans, but the same, the same being that we're talking about the word, God, consciousness, all the, that one, right. Was in the world, right. And the world was made by him, by God, consciousness. I am the word of that one. The world was made by that and the world knew it not. The world will tell you the world is made by geniuses or inventions or inventors or by uh, all kind of other whatever, whomever, by the Russians or the Chinese or the Americans or by men or by women. No, they were not. The world was made by one thing. The word God consciousness. The word of God is consciousness expressed. I am your word is God. If you don't remember anything else I say today, if you want a bumper sticker, you want a little something to put on your refrigerator, this is it. Write it in first person. Everybody write it down. Put it on your phone. Put it in your notes. My word is God. What does that mean? It means what I am telling myself is true is true. That is going to happen for me. Whether it is to me, for me, against me, or with me, it is going to happen at some point. My word is God. My word is the authoritative control and creative director, producer, artist, actor of my life. This is what's governing it all. But what does it say? But the world knew it not. We don't, we think it's something else. So the word came unto its own and his own received him not. Verse 11. What does it mean? I don't, I, why would I get cancer? I don't think like that. Why would I be broke? I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to be that. We have thoughts that we entertain constantly. 
or that we've never, that we've entertained that, okay, we're not talking to them anymore, but they still spent the night. They're still in your house. You have clothes you wear that you that are in your closet. You don't have to have them on for them to be a part of your house, a part of your life. You just don't have them on, but they're still there. So we 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 think we can think anything, and then we let the thought go, meaning we're not thinking about it anymore. But we've already entertained it enough for it to be a part of our experience. But then that but then the outcome of that of that experience, almost like when you go out to dinner and you pay for something with your credit card. If you looked right on your credit card after that, you probably wouldn't see it for maybe a day or two, maybe three, depending on when you did it. But it doesn't mean it wasn't swiped. It doesn't mean it wasn't charged. So when you sat up in your in your morning and you grieved going to work and you can't stand those people and they make your head hurt and they get on your nerves and you wish you didn't have to do anything, you could do, you wish you could do anything to stay home. Well, that car accident will do it. You slipping and falling down the stairs will do it. Somebody, you know. So something will happen to do that. But what does it say? And the world was made by him. Your world is made by that thought you were entertaining. But what does it say? And the world was made by him and the world knew it not. So then when you fell down the stairs, you didn't receive it. You were thinking, well, why, well I wouldn't want to fall down the stairs. No, you wouldn't want to fall down the stairs. But you said you would do anything not to have to see these people today. And, you're in, and your intention was not to fall down the stairs, but your consciousness knows what it takes for you not to go. If you would have just slipped and fell, you would have went to work. But if you fall down these steps good enough, it's not there to hurt you. It's there to give you the physical expression of yourself. It's no respect of persons. It's a law. And when your intention is, when you, when your intention is sullied, right, then it has to, then your physical world has to reflect your intention to that intensity in that direction. You are the creative aspect. You are the light of the world. Nothing that is made is made without that. Everything that's happening in your life is made because of that. But we know it not. So when, when, when the outcome came unto us, right? When it came unto its own, his own received him not. When that physical experience comes into our life from the thought we have, from the consciousness, from the words we're speaking, and the words don't have to be literally spoken. It's just literally saying that in order to have a word, you have to think something first. And then the words you speak right, is God. It's the authority. Whatever you think and say is the authority. But but saying doesn't even always have to be verbal. It's just your awareness. You know your name is Cisco. You don't have to tell everybody. You don't have to tell yourself that. You know that to be true. You know your name is Natasha. You don't have to tell everybody. If someone asks you, you can. But, the, but your word is your awareness so that when something happens, when somebody says, what's your name? You say, oh, Natasha. You don't have to say, well, let me think about it. Hold on. Now, uh, let me look at my credit report. You don't have to figure out, you know your name to be something. That's your word. It's your awareness. It's active. And then when the physical thing comes, we receive it not. I don't know how I got that. Well, why would that happen? I didn't want that. I would never say that. No, you just didn't realize the outcome of what you're thinking. You didn't realize what it was going to be. Almost like when you tell kids don't do something and then they do it and you're like, okay, well, now you're not going to your friend's house. They're like, but wait, 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 that's not fair. Why? Well, didn't you do what I asked? Didn't I? Didn't you do what I told you not to do? Yeah, but that was just oh. So, like my mom always said, you can choose, you can make the choice, but you can't choose the consequence. Remember, we talked about. I don't know if my, my man George is on here, so I know we got a good kick out of that one. The second pack of muffins. You think you can just have the thought, and you think that you don't have to buy the outcome. When you go to Costco, you got to get both packs of those muffins. You can't just take one. It's the same thing. You can't just think anything and wonder why you got what you got. So if they do something, you're like, well, you're not going to your friends. I was like, wait a minute, how come? That was just, so let me get it straight. I told you don't do something, you did it. And then you decided that you could do it. Then you want to decide what I should do about it. What's, where, where does that happen? Look, you broke into somebody's house. Yes, I did. Well, and I did that. But I think what should happen to me is... Where do they do that? Arlen's asking if you could repeat that one more time. Which part? Hopefully. Which part, Marlon? You can make... Oh, yes. Choice. But you can't choose the consequence. Yes. My mom says that all the time. Or maybe she doesn't say it much anymore, but maybe it's just there in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I, so I want us to understand that first. Please go back over to the top of that one. Yes. 
to the top top. Yes. In the beginning. In the beginning. When is the beginning? For, for all of us on here, right? Right now. When is the beginning? While I'm setting your mind. Yes. I, I did, yeah. But I didn't say where. I said when. When we say so. Yes. In the sense of the beginning is anything before is the beginning before you do anything. So in the beginning of your day, when you wake up was the word and the word is which right in the beginning, when you wake up is consciousness and your and the words that come as a result of your consciousness. And that is God. So when you wake up in the beginning, what are you saying in the beginning of your morning? In the beginning, before you go into work, in the beginning, before you get in your car, in the beginning, before you cook, in the beginning, right now, for you, Tosh, and our conversation we were having earlier, this is the beginning of whatever is going to be next. What are you saying now? Michelle, this is the beginning where you are, where you are now. What are you saying? Your word is, in the, is with you right now. What are you saying? What you're saying is when it goes down to verse, uh, verse 10 is in the world. And the world is made by what you're saying. And if you're not aware of what you're saying, which most of us are not, then we'll say we knew it not. I didn't say that. I never said I wanted to come down here and struggle. I came down here to, to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, but in the beginning, you don't remember what you were saying. We forget what we're saying. We forget what we said. We forget what we entertained. We forgot that we swiped the credit card, but we did. But it was Friday night and they didn't charge it till Tuesday morning. But if you look at the bill, you can't say you didn't eat there. Right? If you look back, you'll realize if you look back at your life, the, and, the, and it's, that was one of the best things that if you if anybody plays sports, they call it film study. And they usually do, they usually do it in football earlier but now sports have changed so much, but in sports they'll do, so you'll have practice or a game. And after the practice or a game, you review film and you will swear you didn't do certain things. You would put, you would have swore before a guy that you made up and look him right in the face and be like, I didn't do that. And on the film, it'll show you, you did exactly that. <laughs> you'll swear you didn't do it, but you did it. Right. That's why they say the eye in the sky don't lie. That's a sports term. Like they'll, they'll when that camera's on you, it'll tell you exactly what you did. And so it's such a creative tool. And my point is, we can do film study in our lives. We can look back and reflect and say, uh, oh, okay, now I see how that happened. But we don't do that constructively. We do it destructively. We look back at guilt, fear, shame, blame. So we never learn anything. We're in such a hurry to get out of something, we don't learn anything from it, which is we jump from one pot to a hot skillet. Oh, it may look different, but it's just as hot. It's going to burn you one way or another, whether it's the boiling water or the hot pan itself. It's still hot. You're jumping from one thing to another because you haven't learned anything. But we're in such a hurry to get out of something or whether it's by blaming or switching or changing, but we actually don't correct the issue. And that doesn't require judgment or criticism. There is no condemnation. There's no guilt or condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. I mean, to those that are, that are the same mind that should be in you. There is none of that. So just like when they caught the lady with adultery and they said, let him throw the first stone and he looked around and everybody walked away. Yeah, it, he just said, okay, don't make that mistake anymore after that. Don't make the mistake that you don't wanna be here for. I'm not even saying it's a mistake. I'm saying it looks like you don't wanna be here right now. So then don't do what it took to get here again. I wouldn't do that. But it, there was no lecture. There was no, how could you do this? There's none of that. But the that same mind didn't do all that to those people, but that same mind that should be in us, we do we do it to ourselves, and that's not the right mind. So being able to look back and say, oh, that's why I got there. Okay, I can learn from that and keep it pushing. But we don't do that. So then when consequences come, we know it not. The world was made in the beginning by the word, by consciousness that expressed the word, which is God, which is, and if it's your consciousness and your word, that's who you are. God, that's it. Your consciousness, your word, what you're entertaining is the authority of your life. What you're saying is the authority of your life. And you can't say without consciousness. So what you're thinking is the authority of your life. That is God. That is I am. That is awareness of being. First person, present tense. That is my name unto all generations. Like we said it last week, I am who I am. Well, who are you saying you are? 
that in the beginning of your morning, in the beginning of your day, in the beginning of your move, in the beginning of your business, in the beginning of your relationship, in the beginning of your parenting, in the beginning of whatever it is, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning is your awareness of being. What are you aware of being? What are you saying? What are you, what are you authorizing to be? In the beginning, every day is a new beginning. Every morning today is different than yesterday. Yesterday will never be again. Today has never been. And tomorrow ain't here yet. What are you saying today? What have you said already? Take a look around at what you've been saying and what you look at or what you see will match more than you care to believe. Oh, I don't know how this got here. I don't know, I, but it's mine. I don't know how I got sick, but I am. How do I not know how I got sick if I am? You think God doesn't know how it got sick? In that sense, in physical form? It doesn't even make any sense. But it's not correct. That's why it doesn't feel good. It's not natural. That's why it doesn't feel good. But it can happen. But it's not natural. That's why it doesn't feel good. So when people say, oh, it's natural to be sick, it's not. It's not normal to be sick either. It's normalized. It's normalized to be poor, but that's not normal. So I don't feel good. That's why you can't do the things of life that you want to do. When your leg don't work, when your eye don't work, when this don't happen and that can't happen, that's why it doesn't feel because it's, it's, not, it's not true. But it can truly be experienced. It can truly happen. But in the beginning, right? In the beginning, we, don't, we didn't pay attention to our word. We just said anything. I'm being real. I'm keeping it real. 100, right? All the emojis and everything else. And that's the beginning. We are declaring and decreeing. Okay, we're going to the second one now. Thank you. Yes, I believe so. All right. Keep it go down a little bit. Okay, stop. Number four. Cisco, what does that say? The words of a man's mouth Stop. are deep. Stop. Say it again. The words of a man's mouth Stop. are deep. Stop. The words of a man's mouth. The words of a, what is what word do we substitute for man right there? What does that mean? What does that word man right there mean? What is that? What is that? God, I am the mind. Your consciousness, the words of your consciousness, the words of your mind, the words of I am, the words of awareness are deep waters, deep well spring, deep well. Now, depending on where you turn it, then it could be wisdom in a flowing book, but the words of your mouth, the words of a mind's, of a mind's mouth, the words of your consciousness, Okay, go down to verse six. A Cisco, fool's what lips does that say? Enter, yeah. Say it again. Whose lips enter into contention and go his ahead. mouth calls for, for blows. Yep. Mm -hmm. Keep going. A fool's mouth is his destruction mm -hmm. and his lips are the snare of his soul. Stop. So when you're getting your butt whoop, where did that come from? His mouth calls for blows. When everything is falling apart, a fool's mouth is his destruction. And the lips are the snare of his soul. That's talking about you. You, me, all of us. A fool. What is a fool? A fool is a mind with no information. Or incorrect information or someone who doesn't use it, but take it any way you want it. That's what a fool is. That's what an ignoramus is. It's without knowledge. Another word for that would be the word nice. Everybody remember that? Oh, he's so nice. Remember that word nice, right? Without knowledge, a fool. That's what that word means. 
A fool's lips enter into, a mind without knowledge enter into contention. A mind without knowledge, right, is start to run their mouth and their mouth calls for blows and their own mouth calls for their own destruction. And their own lips, his lips, that means your lips, Natasha's lips, Michelle's lips, Della's lips, Alberta's lips, your own lips call for the, for the snare of your soul. Cause your own destruction. Deal your own blows and, and, and get you into contention, get you into the, the situations you're in. But your lips can't run if your mind ain't on. So what you said is because of what you thought. This is what it is. This is what gets us into what we're in. In the beginning. All right. In the beginning, the words of a mind's mouth are deep waters. In the beginning, our lips enter in contention and our mouth calls for blows. And our mind is our destruction and the snare of our soul. In the beginning is when these things happen. We just don't pay attention until the end. But there is no end without a beginning. There is no outcome without first something happening. There is no effect without a cause. The, it, it, the words of a mind's mouth, the words of your mind. In the beginning, the words of your mind. Okay, go down a little bit, please. I can't remember if there's anything else. Uh, 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 uh. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. Cool. All right. Then go to the next one, please. Okay. So now let's go back. So last week, right? It says verse one. Uh, let's see who, let's see, uh, Alberta, if you're available, please read verse one. Okay, let's see who else. Hold on, I gotta find my glasses. <laughs> okay. Verse one? Yes. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Stop. And the dark Stop. Was Stop. Read it again. Start, start so in the beginning to without form. Okay, read that part. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. Stop. Okay. Why? What else could it be? Why? Nothing was Why without form. Nothing was nothing. There was no instruction yet. Yeah. Nothing said. What does it say in verse three? Donas, the Donaya said, um, he did not. Yet. Yes. He had not spoken. Yes. Awareness, your word in the beginning, right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In your beginning is your word, and your word is with you. You and your word are one. So until you say something, what do you have? Nothing. Nothing. So when you say to yourself, I don't have it, I don't have enough of it, what does that mean? What does that mean? You're bringing it to pass, like, then you won't have it. Yeah, that's speaking lack into existence. Well, why do you, well, okay. Okay, wait, 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 wait. But that's not true. Let me tell you why. What does it say in the beginning? Read, what is, Kari, read verse, read verse one. What does it say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, read the second one. The earth was without form and void okay. and darkness. Stop. Stop. Oh. It was without form and void. Is that speaking it into existence? No. Technically, it exists, but it exists without definition. Because Okay, because of what? Well, it's all we're referencing it. So it's it has there, not been it's created. Not been defined yet. Right. So then what does it take to define something? Your words. Well, there's two parts here, right? So in the, in the beginning, it says he created it. 
Yes. And then, then in, in, in uh, verse two, it says the earth was without form. Yes. So it sounds like in verse one, it was the concept, but without it actually being spoken or defined, it was just this analogous thing where it was like potential until it became solid with the verb being spoken. That is that is that is pretty correct. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. They're just telling you, like, okay, now we're gonna tell you how this happened. Right. So it didn't say like it's not saying that the heavens and the earth were created at this point. It's just telling you the beginning of the story. Like saying, uh, in fairy tale land, there was Cinderella, so to speak. Like it's just uh, telling you what's about to happen. But I got but you. right? So then be but before before the story got going, the earth was without form and void. So there was no lack spoken, but there was no verse three either. So the absence of something doesn't mean that lack was spoken, but there's also absence because there was nothing spoken. And if there is nothing spoken, then you can't have anything, whether it's whether you want to call it lack or prosperity, it has to be spoken. Because the earth was without form. Our lives are without form and they're void until we speak. Until And before we speak, we think. Our lives are without anything. Everything is neutral until everything is without form and void. There's just, to your point, there's just potential. Because God is there before the earth was formed. God was there. I am was there. You were there before the earth was formed. And when there was void, you were there. All of us together were there. We are the Elohim, the Hebrew word meaning all, one made up of many. There's one God in all, above all, and through all. We are all different identities, aspects of it, but we're only one. Like I said, you're the supervisor, the husband, the wife, the niece, the nephew. You're one being playing a bunch of different roles, but you're still only one being. So with in, in, your, in our lives, the earth, our life, our lives are without form and they're void. That's not negative or bad. It's a reflection of the authority hasn't said anything yet. That's all. Then that authority said, let there be and there was. Let there be and there was. It doesn't matter what you put after be. Let there be money. Let there be health. Let there be a cold. Let there be these people get on my nerves. Let there be, oh, I can't take it. Let there be, uh, I can never get ahead. Let there be, it's not what you know is who you know. Let there, whatever you tell you, let whatever you say, let there be, let it be. There is no let there be, but since I said this, it's guaranteed. But if I, but if I say let there be this, maybe it's not actually, no, there is no conditions. This is God, not humanity. Meaning, these God deals with laws. Humanity deals with rules. That's why they're changing them all the time. They call them laws, but they're not. Gravity is a law. Marijuana is obviously not a law because they keep changing it. Alcohol is not a law. They keep changing it. Right? You went from prohibition. You had, you had alcohol. Then you had prohibition. Now you have alcohol again. It's obviously not a law. Obviously. A rule gravity ain't changed that's a law the law is when you say in the beginning with your word the wellspring that comes out of your mouth from your mind the, your mind is the wellspring is the well and your word is the spring that comes out of the well and you say let there be i don't care what you put after that that's what it is there's nothing, when God said, let there be light, and there was light, somebody in the background said, hell no, I'm a Republican. That's not going to work. What do you mean light? Well, how bright? Well, uh, you didn't get consent. Well, we didn't vote. That's not the way this works. That's not the way this works. You are the God of your life, meaning you are the authority of your life, meaning your consciousness, your awareness, and what you use it to speak is the authority of your life. You are saying, you are always saying, let there be. But when we say it, when we come to the world, when our outcome comes to us, we receive it not. We say, I don't know why that happened. I can't believe it. I would have never said it. What do you mean? But there was nothing made that was made without that 
sequence of events. Nothing. It didn't say most things, didn't say some things, didn't say a time limit, didn't say whether you're a woman or a man, didn't say whether you're black or white, didn't say whether you're old or young, didn't say whether you have an education or you don't. It doesn't say that. It didn't say that. And it didn't say what, it didn't wasn't conditioned on what you said. It doesn't say anything in here about positive thinking. It's telling you when you think certain things Things are going to happen, but it's not saying, it's just saying, if you want to think this way, this is going to happen. If you want to think this way, this is going to happen. I would share, I would tell you that this is smarter to say, and this is probably dumber to say, but it's thinking. You can say whichever one you want. God said, let there be. It doesn't matter. You can say light. You can say whatever else, but whatever God said, that's what it was. Whatever you say, that's what it is. Then God said, let the waters under the heaven. Okay. Whatever God said, it happened. Whatever you say, it happens. It's, it's happening. It happened. It's happening. It happens. It will happen. Is whatever you say has happened, is happening, and will continue to happen until you say something else. In the beginning. In the beginning of your life, in the beginning of your day, in the beginning of your week, in the beginning of your morning, in the beginning of your night, in the beginning, there's always the beginning of something. What are you saying? You're always saying, let there be. Ignorance of that truth does not save you. Let there be. You're always saying, let there be. Oh man, I'll never have enough money. Let there be broke. Let, you, let me just translate it for you. Oh, man, you know, it's flu season. Let there be flu. I mean, you know, why don't you just, why don't you just, tell, if you tell the truth, you'll understand better. You'll understand better. If you tell the truth, it'll make more sense to you. I never have enough. Let there be broke. Let there be struggle. Let there be trauma. Let there be drama. Let them not like me. Let them hate me. Let them... Let them mistreat me. Let them disrespect me. Let them oh, just, just say it that way so you'll understand when you see it better. You know how you ask your friend for a ride and they don't really want to give it to you? And they make up a whole bunch of reasons that you everybody knows cap, but they it just sound bad because they don't want to say no directly. Oh man, uh, 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 well, uh, well, you know, I gotta drop so and so off, and then I gotta, and then my gas, and you know, my tires a little bit low. It's like, dude, just say no. But they don't really want to say no because they feel either embarrassed or they feel like they owe you something, but they don't want to do it right now. But they're just going all around it, thinking you don't know. Well, that's all you're doing with your consciousness. You, as Leslie, are going around telling yourself with all these fancy words that you broke and your conscience just says, I'm broke. You could say, oh, because I'm a woman. Oh, I'm black. Oh, because of this. Oh, because your conscience says I'm broke. You going all these fancy words. I'm just cut to the chase. I'm broke. We broke. Cool. Let's get it cracking. You and all these semantics and this oratorical genius and your Eric, Michael Eric Dyson-ness, it's just I'm broke. All these words we use in and everything don't change anything. It's just like that friend. Don't want to tell you the truth, but telling you no around in a roundabout way. Just say, let there be poverty. Let there be sickness. Just say, let there be struggle. Let there be check to check. Just tell the truth and then you'll understand what you're looking at better. It'll make more sense. Because it's coming no matter what, because that's what you're saying. Even though you're trying to beat around the bush and find a, uh, a way to be grateful and to practice gratitude while you're saying you're broke, you're still saying you're broke. That's why it's coming. There's, there's no semantics here. Your conscious, your, your, your subconscious mind, your, that, your higher mind is literal. Not as in, it's literal of your intention, not your word, of your intention. It knows what you mean. Just like when you know somebody, you know what they mean. Not just what they say, but what they mean. That's what you really latch on to. When you don't know somebody, you just do what they say. When you know somebody, you know what they mean. So you understand like, oh, okay, she wants me to do it like, she, I understand what she wants. Not what she said, but what she wants. Those aren't always the same thing. That's how humans deal with each other. It's in context. Right? So I'm saying, when you say, let there be, in the beginning, you're always saying, let there be. All of our individual lives 
is one God living individual experiences. So all of us are living by the same law. No one has a higher up or a leg back, a leg up or a leg down, however you want to say it. Nobody has an up or down. Nobody's in front or behind. But everybody's running their own race according to their own awareness, their own knowledge, their own strength, their own conditioning, their own to their own faculties and their levels of awareness and what they are applying and what they're employing. But you're always saying, let there be. And it's always in the beginning. What does it say here? In the beginning. What does it say in the other? In the beginning was the word. What does it say here? In the beginning, in the beginning, God. Well, guess what? Before the created, created the heavens and the earth, guess who was there? God. Well, guess where? Guess who was there with it? The word. Guess what was there with it? Consciousness. It's telling you the same thing in 50 different, not even the same chapters. These aren't even the same test. These aren't, this is Old Testament, the one we're reading now. The other one's New Testament. It's not even the same series, so to speak. This is like the second one, the, 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 like the sequel. The New Testament's just like the second part. I have a question. Yes. Why does it say he Greek up here? Um, that's their own, this is like a, like a website. And so oh. if you click on there and you do another subscription, then they'll break some of these down, these words down in Hebrew or Greek. Oh, excuse me. In Hebrew or Greek. And so that's why a lot of us, and that's why a lot of us don't understand what we're reading here. Because a lot of these words, we don't understand what their actual meanings and definitions are. We're reading them exoterically, meaning literally. So we don't understand how to get, but, and so to answer, uh, a lot of you guys have asked me the same question. This is perfect because I'm just going to say it now because it's just when it came up. So a lot of you guys have asked me, um, you know, how how I know certain things or this or that. Well, I'm good. Thank you. Um, there's a difference between, just think about it like this. When you, when you want to get to know someone, you spend time with them. And when you spend time with someone, you get to know who they are. You get to know what they mean. You have an understanding of them, separate from their name, separate from what they look like, separate from what someone told you. You get to understand who they are when you spend time with someone. Right. When you spend time with information like this, it's the same thing as spending time with a person. You will get a better understanding of it. It will open itself up to you. Your your awareness will start to click in. You'll be like, oh, I know what they said, but I know what they mean because I have a better understanding of them. When you spend time with someone, you're spending time. You're getting to know them. You're getting to know who they are on the inside. The more time you spend, the more in you go, the more in you get. Right. So it's the same thing with information. When you spend time with it, it will open itself up to you. Things will start to click for you. You're like, oh, that's what it meant. Oh, now I know what that meant. It's almost like tying your shoes. It's like this loop over here attached to this loop and you work your way up because you realize it's the same shoe. Things that don't seem the bottom laces don't seem to have anything to do with tying the top, but they do. You couldn't get to the top without the bottom. So they're all related but they don't seem that way. But when you tie the laces up, you work your way from the bottom up to the top and you realize it's the same shoe, right? So when you spend time with anything, whether it's information, whether it's a person, the more time you spend with them, the more you get to know them. So it's not just what they say, you really, you start to realize and get an understanding of what they mean. And so when you spend time with this information or information of any kind, the more time you spend with anything, you get a better understanding of what it means. Whatever it means, it means, but you get a better understanding of what it means, not just what it's saying, but what it means. That's why it says study to show yourself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing. You have to be able to rightly divide. That takes time. That takes time. You that takes time to spend. Then you get to know a person. Then you can rightly divide what they said from what they mean. Because you've studied, you've dated, you've spent time. It doesn't matter what the relationship is, your kids, your significant other, your parents. That's how you that's how you're able to rightly divide what they said from what they mean. Somebody who doesn't know them will only tell you what they said. They'll never know what they mean. That's why it says in the book, I know my father. That's why Jesus said, I know my father, whom you call your God. They kept talking about what God said. Jesus kept telling you what God means. When you have a relationship with something, you know what it means, not just what it says, right? So that's why it says in the beginning, God. In the beginning is God. In the beginning is the word. 
That's what God is. It's the word. God is its word. Your word is God. What you're saying is the what you say to yourself about yourself, what you tell yourself is true, is true. What you say to yourself is what is creating your physical world. Give you one more example. Go to the last one, please. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Leslie, if you're available, if you I'm can here. see the screen, yeah, if you can see the screen where it says so, right there. Can you see that? I'm not seeing that screen. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, wait. Okay. Okay. Where it says so, where it's highlighted. So I tell you. Yes, go ahead. Even, even in the simplest thing, a lady came one day, she said, I want more money. Stop. I said, Stop. So the beginning of the story is, so this story is about what? A, a conversation between. What, two, is she, what does she want? What is this for? She wants more money. Okay, yeah. everybody hear that? She wants more money. Okay, this is not about uh, incense and candles. What we do here is talk about, I want more money. I want more health. I want more success. I want more, whatever it is, right? So we're not here to just feel good about feeling bad. This ain't positive thinking, candles and smoke, right? This is how to think in order to get more money or more health or whatever it is. Okay, so this story is about more money. Okay, go ahead. I said... What do you do? She said, I'm a seamstress, and yet I am also an artist. I design, and yet I am a, seamst a seamstress, but I do aid in designing. I said, now what do you want? Stop. Now watch this. Now this is what I mean when I say you start, when you start to understand how things work, you'll start to see it. I want more money. Uh, I want more money. Um, what is that? A desire. A What's desire? another word? It's a desire. What's another word for that? A thought. Exploration. Yes. Command. Huh? A command. A command. Yeah, but is that is that what really what we say? Is that really what people say? What do, what do we say before we know better? What do we call it? Thinking? No. What else do we call it? In religion, what would you call that? A request. What do you call that? Prayer. A, prayer. A, prayer. A, prayer. a prayer. A prayer. A prayer. A prayer. That's what people would call a prayer. I want more money. A prayer. Now, after that prayer, after what does she say? She's telling you what she does. I'm praying that she's telling you what she does. Okay. So the person praying is is the person asking that is praying, right? Okay, the person they're talking to said what? What did they say, Leslie? What do you want? Right, who said? Who says that? Who are you praying to? Right. God, uh, yeah. you're praying to your own consciousness. This story is between two humans, so to speak, but we're, we can take it and extract it and get the principle. I want more money. You say to yourself, I want more money. That's not a that's not a that's not an expression of lack. That's not an expression of it's not a negative statement. You're just making yourself aware. You're saying, okay, this is what I want now. And your consciousness is saying, now, okay, and you're going through this is what I want, and this is why I want it, because you know, and I got so and so. And your consciousness doesn't go through all that. What does it say? What do you want? It didn't say anything about your degree. Didn't say anything about you messed up the money I gave you last time. Didn't say anything about, well, right, yeah, come on, man. Or, you know, what are your friends going to say? It doesn't say, well, you know, it's a recession. It doesn't go through all that. You go through that. You do that. You bring your own bright ideas into a, a conversation that has nothing to do with it. Okay, so, so this person, God, we're just exchanging it, says, now, what do you want? Okay, go ahead, Leslie. She said... I want X number of dollars. I got to move this screen. I'm sorry. And then minus. Go ahead. I'm a single person living in a hotel. 
So minus my deductions for taxes and all the other things that are taken out of my salary, I want exactly $100. Okay, stop. So she's a single person. And she says, I want exactly $100. Everybody with us so far? Yep. Okay, let's see what happens. Go ahead. This goes way back in years, not today. I'm going back when $100 was really not what $100 is today. And she said, this is what I did. I held the envelope in my hand and then I tore off the end. I could hear the tearing of the paper, the, of the paper on the envelope. I shook the contents out and then I counted the, out the money, even to the very pennies that I would get if I had X number of dollars minus that they would deduct. I counted everything out. Stop, that very... stop. I counted everything out. Okay. So where are we? Imagination. Yes, but where? Yes. Yes, we are. That's what she is doing. Where is she then? In the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning is imagination. And imagination was with God. And imagination was God. I am is imagination. I am is consciousness. Right. What we call imagination is just I am acting. The verb now is acting what it's imagining what it's seen, what it's aware of being, it's acting out. It's what imagination is. It's consciousness in action. I now have this idea and now I'm acting in my mind. I'm seeing it. She's in the beginning. Okay, now let's see. So she said, I counted everything out. She said, I want $100 exactly. Okay, she counted that, everything out. Go ahead, Leslie. That very week, the phone rang in the lobby of my hotel, and here was a total stranger. Stop. Last two words of that. Say it again. Total stranger. Okay, read the next part right there. She knew of me, but had never met me. Stop. Now, people tell you, so she was, this person was a what? Stranger. Hmm. So then, how are you supposed to know a total stranger? You don't. Okay. So then what happens to, it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's a lie. That's a lie. Oh, it's a rule, but it's not a law, right? You can right. make it true for you. You can make it yeah. true for you, but just understand that you made that true for you. So now in your experience, you got to find people to know that you hope will give you something. You're putting all these conditions in. You, right. you get to do that, but just understand you did that. But understand when you did it in the beginning. 100%. Right? Okay, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Hold on, Leslie. Yes. She asked with her mouth or spoken, and she received? Well, I don't know. Let's see. All right. So, so, but I want to, I want to stop there because I want everybody to understand that all the rules we give ourselves, all the, and because real rules are really the lies. They're not malicious lies, but they're, they're still lies the same. They're still going to enslave you. What is, what, is, what do they say? Hello. Never ascribe to malice. Never ascribe to malice that which can be explained by incompetence. 100%. Right? Just because somebody did something to you doesn't mean that it was malicious. They just may have been so ignorant that they couldn't help it or didn't know that's what's going to happen. Right? But so just because we believe something doesn't mean it's true. But because we believe it, we've made it true in our experience. We've included it. Okay. So she, it was a total, she said a total stranger. Right. She knew of me, but had never met me. So she didn't know her. Right. The stranger knew her, but she didn't know her. She's the one who needs something. The stranger doesn't. Okay, go ahead. And she asked me if I would see her. So I came down to the lobby, not knowing who she was. Stop. Is anybody getting the point yet? <laughs> Is anybody getting the point yet? So when people say you have to take massive action, what action did she take to know this person? 
What has she done up to this point to know that person? What did she do? Nothing. No, that's not true. Well, humanity calls it nothing. Yes, I understand what you mean, but that's the point. Humanity calls it nothing. Because right. humanity tell you, you got to go out and put bumper stickers on everybody's car. You got to go door to door. You got to get on Instagram 500 times. You got to go out and meet this person. And you got to network because your network is your network. And oh, it sounds, oh, it sounds flossy and saucy. And I ain't hating on it. I'm just simply saying I'm 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 at the point now I'm past the rules because the rules don't help and they keep changing. So now you master all these rules and now you did it and and what you got? The person dead. So now your network is dead. So guess what happens to your net worth? It goes with it. So she did the one thing she really needed to do. The only thing she needed the to do is the thing. only that's what I'm telling you guys every weekend. I'm not against Instagram or or uh, or 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 advertising or marketing. That's not what I'm saying, right? But you just said it. She did the only thing she needs to do, and you don't know what you need to do. You just know what you want. But you'll listen to everybody else tell you what you need to do. But there's a thousand other people who've done it a thousand different ways. So she came down to the lobby. Why did she say it again? Not knowing who she was. Can't you see? She's like, damn, I'm amazed. I don't know who this person is. How they call me looking for me? How could you have made that happen? How are you going to call somebody you don't even know exists? How are you going to network with somebody that you don't know exists? How are you going to do that? So when you start when you start going by all these rules, you don't realize you're enslaving yourself. You don't realize it because everybody has normalized it, just like a cold, just like being broke. They've normalized something that's not normal. They've made something common that's not correct. So not knowing who she was. Okay, go ahead. And here was someone who employed many people and offered me a job and paid me to the penny what I had counted out. Stop. Go ahead, read it again for me. Read it out loud and slow so that so that I don't have to tell everybody here I'm right again. To read it real slow and offensive. I want everybody to be offended that I told you so. This is Leslie's reading it for me so I can say I told you so. Go ahead, Leslie, please. So I came down to the lobby mm -hmm. not knowing who mm -hmm. she was. Mm -hmm. And here was someone who employed many people mm -hmm. and offered me a job and paid me to the penny what I had counted out. Hmm. So let's get this correct. Hmm. So this seems like this is somebody that you'd like to know, right? Because she employed many people. So this is not, this is not what you know is who you know. Well, yeah, well, guess who knew this person? Consciousness. Yeah. God knew. Consciousness. I am knows this person. Cisco don't know this person. Cisco don't know this person exists. But I am in Cisco does. But I am will never go find this person because Cisco says it's not what it's not what I know. It's who I know. But Cisco don't know this person's alive. So Cisco don't even know he don't know that he don't know this person. So this person does exist, but you don't know them. So then you say they don't exist. But that's why you're broke. And I don't mean you literally, obviously, you know that. No. Right? That is you meaning all of us. That's why you're broke. Mm -hmm. That's why you're sick. That's the source popping, actually. Right? That's why. <laughs> that, that's why this is happening to you. All right? Because you say you need to know somebody. You say you need this and you need that. And you, you've you gone by humanity's rules that change all the time. And humanity's rules that you go by, but somebody else has violated that same rule and has this without a degree, has that much money with no education, has that much money and they're a woman, has that much money and they are this or that. So number one, right? Your consciousness knows everybody. You just don't in your human mind, but it does. So, okay. And, and then what else do they do? So employed many people. So, you know, that means you do know your higher mind knows who you need to know. Okay. And then what else happened? No, up. Uh, Right there, or right in the middle. So I employed many people. And then what else happened after that? She counted out the exact amount of money. No, but after employed many people. Uh, and offered me a job. Stop. What does it say? Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things will be what? Will be what? 
No, don't get quiet now. Click on. Say, say something. Yeah, yeah, add it unto you. Add yeah. it unto you. Oh, yeah. Everybody got, oh, yeah. Well, who acts like that? Who acts like their good is going to be added? Do you guys act like that? I do now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at everybody now. To, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Good. But that's why we're here. That's okay. That's why. But I want, I want us to see the difference, right? That's why I laugh and joke. Cause there's no condemnation. There's no guilt. We all in it. I talk crazy and crazy because I'm living it just like you all are. Like I said, you ain't gonna see me at the liquor store doing something I should. Like I live what I say. If I if I drink, I I say I, I drink. I I'm about all the smoke and the action because I want to win. I don't care what you think or what you feel. I'm telling you the truth, and I'm giving it to you in as many ways as I can. They offered you a job. You didn't have to. Did she did she apply for the job? Did she do that? She didn't even know she, there was a job available. She did. She didn't know what. The person. She didn't even know the person. Right. So then how did she get it if she didn't know anybody? How did she get a job offered to her and she didn't even know the person existed? The person came looking for her and gave her something. Well, who gave it to her? Consciousness. Consciousness. God gave it to you. What did I always tell you? Mm -hmm. God is the only buyer and the only seller. Your, your good, your anything does not come, it does not come through, it does not come from other people, it comes through them. Your consciousness will find it's coming from you to you, but it will it can come through anything. And your consciousness will always find the right thing for it to come through. It knows everybody. It's going to find the right thing for it to come through. You don't have to go chasing it. You'll walk right across it. You'll bump right into it. It'll come right to you. That's why it says seek first. But everybody will tell you, you can't, you can't pray and then just do nothing. Well, she did. She did what Leslie said, the only thing that mattered. That's what the people in the book are telling you. Seek first. That's what this means. This is what I did. I held the envelope in my hand. What did she do? What massive action did she take? This is what I did. I held the envelope in my hand and then I tore off the end. I could hear the tearing of the paper, the envelope. I shook the contents out and then I counted out the money, even to the very pennies that I would get if I had the X number of dollars minus what they would deduct. I counted everything out, period. Who did she do that with? Leslie, were you there? I was not. Cisco, were you there? Sparkle Bailey, Kari? Latoya, De De anybody? Was anybody there helping her out? Was she holding nope. hands and coming to an agreement? Did she have an accountability partner? Oh, I know you guys like that shit. Oh, I just, you almost got me upset. Oh, well, everybody's got to have somebody to hold their hand now. Like we're in kindergarten, crossing the street. Yeah, see, like, yeah, I, yeah, the nice thing, the nice guy thing is over. You guys, now you get to know what I mean. Yeah, that, like, I, I'm just, miss me with the cap. Miss me with it. She did that by herself and had nothing. She said, I'm a single person living in a hotel. She didn't have nobody to hold hands with her, nobody to hold her accountable, nobody to call. I'm not saying those things are bad. I'm saying you're using them to get out of being what you really are. Ain't nothing wrong with some crutches, but how long is your leg broke? How long is this going to work? So that means I can't get my money until I can find Cisco to hold me accountable. What if Cisco go on vacation? What if Cisco's phone battery goes out? He hasn't charged and he's going to charge it later. Who's going to hold me accountable? So until I can be held accountable, I can't get paid or I can't be healthy. I can't get a new job. What are you talking about? Right. And so she said, and so she offered me a job. And then Leslie, go ahead. Say the last part. Yeah, right there. That's fine. She offered me a job and paid me to the penny what I had counted out. So she did, she was the physical expression of your consciousness. She was yeah. the word that became flesh. Guess who you are then? Jesus. Your word became flesh. Your word is flesh. You're always, your word is always being made flesh. It's always coming into what you call reality. Now, what does it say the next one? The next line, what does it say, Leslie? That lady could have counted out much more. Stop. But it was Stop. Say it again. That lady could have counted out much more. Say it again. That lady could have counted out much more. Say it again. 
That lady could have. Yeah. 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 Well, guess what? And I don't mean this literally. Guess like what you guess like you're tired of reading it over and over. I'm tired of hearing over and over about this faux gratitude that you guys practice. And you can't ask God for enough. You can't beat God giving. Just like they say in church, I can't beat God. Yeah, just like that. God is good all the time, every day, all the time. Really? I can't tell. God never said, did it say the lady counted out, have counted out much more, but, you know, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, but God, she didn't want to be too, but no, the lady could have counted out much more. God said you could have asked me for more. You can't ask for enough. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, a cattle on a thousand hills. You can't. How can you, if the resources are unlimited, how can you ask for too much? Who's determining how much is to, and who's making that determination? But it was more than what she got before and she was quite satisfied with it. Right to the penny. Right to the penny. She got what? What she wanted. Right. Not what God and the God, you know, God knows. What do you mean? Of course God knows. That's why God asked. I want exactly $100. Right to the penny. And it all happened that week, not six years later, not on God's good timing, not when, uh, you know, not after you tithed, not when you went over, over to the other side. No, it happened that week. It don't have to take six years to get rich. It ain't got to take, it takes as long as you think it takes. But guess what? All this was conditioned upon what? All of her outcome was conditioned upon what? Upon what? The what she Upon what? Her faith. Upon what? Her. her per up upon Consciousness. what? Consciousness. When? In the beginning. In the beginning. Mm -hmm. All of this happened because of what happened in the beginning, because of what she did in the beginning. Everything that's happening to you is because of what you've done in the beginning. What you're doing in the beginning of anything and everything all day. And guess when, and guess, and in, in our human life, guess when the beginning is? How many beginnings do you have? Unlimited. Unlimited. In the sense of every second is a beginning. Okay. Every second is a beginning. You can change your mind right now and end All up right. like. I'm going to work. I'm gone. Right? You can change right now. You don't got to wait till next week. She didn't. Hers happened all that week. She said it all happened that week. So God didn't have to do no one. Hey, you know what? Uh, can I give you 20? And then next week when I get paid, I'm, can I give you another 20? And uh, right? Yeah, yeah. But but that's what we do to ourselves. We're like, God, well, look, you know, I need 100. But if you could just give me 50 right now, we act like God, we put God on payment plans, credit plans. We doing, we putting, we, we treating, we're treating our higher mind like it's ourselves because we don't know it or us. Yeah, God, God's, God's got more layaway plans. He got about, probably got about 7 billion layaway plans. God got everything and God's on a payment plan. What are we what are we talking about? What are we actually doing here? What are we doing here? Messing up. <laughs> well, it's just it's just like Kari said, it's sinning. It just means we're making a mistake. That's all. There's no, there's no guilt, there's no condemnation to those that are in this mind that we're talking about. We're just realizing like, oh, I made a mistake. Like the first, when you learn how to cook and maybe you burn something for the first time, right? Or when you ride a bike and you fall off for the first time. We just made a mistake. We're learning how this thing works. That's okay. But yes, we messed that up. We don't have to be ashamed over it. We didn't know. But yes, but acknowledge you messed it up so you don't keep going. Not to be guilt, not to feel guilt or shame or embarrassment or sadness or I'm stupid or I'll never make it. No, just that you realize like, 
Oh, go forth and sin no more. Like, leave that. Leave that behind you. Change your mind. Repent. Metanoia. Repent. A radical change of mind. Now, do you think she's going to have a problem with this next time if she wants something? No. Because what does it say? And then, so this is why I talk to you the way I talk to you. What does the next sentence say, Leslie? Right there. Well, now, if there is evidence for a thing, what does it matter what the world will think? There you go. That's why I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say, how you feel. I don't care how long it takes for you to get it. I don't care about what somebody else told you. I don't care. Because I've got my $100 more than enough times. I got things that I wanted, needed, hoped I could want, need, whatever else it is. And I got it. So now nobody can convince me that this is not this or that. And I ain't burned no candles. I ain't got no beads. I ain't done this, that, or the other. I did the same thing she did. This is what I did. I held the envelope in my hand. Then I tore it off. I could hear. I shook. I count the money to the very pennies. I, if I, 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 that is you. That is God. I and my father are one. I don't need you. You don't need anybody. And I'm, I'm talking about to be what you want to do what you want. Your higher mind will find everything you need and everyone you need. That's what I mean when I say that. We're not here as, as hum, in a human form to not need anybody, a hug, a, a kiss, uh, an embrace, holding hands. I don't mean that. I'm saying for you to be who you want to be within you are all those faculties. And it will find the right person to have that relationship with, find the right business for you to have. It'll find the right way for you to be healthy. It'll find the right way for you to have the money you want. It will find that just like it found her. A total stranger not knowing who she was, gave her a job and paid her what she wanted. So that lady was nothing but the instrument by which consciousness got you what you physically wanted. What, what, what massive action did she take? Who did she call? Who could she call? What, it's never about that. It's never about that. It's not. It's never about that. Your, your, your consciousness will find, God will find the right person. That's you. It's your higher mind will find the right person. It'll find the right thing. It'll find the right place. It'll find whatever it needs to get you the physical expression of what you have imagined in the beginning. Imagination creates reality. Imagination creates it all happened that week, right to the penny. Imagination caused her to be offered a job and paid to the penny what she had counted out. The lady didn't get to choose what she gave her. She was only the instrument through which consciousness used to give her what she asked for. I, not we, not they, not him, not her. I. I, that's you. That's all of you. That's all of us. I, singular. Um... Uh, okay, no, we're gonna. So, um, what does it matter what the world think? How could how could you now take from her what she has experienced? So the the truth that she has now experienced is paralleled in scripture, right? This is when you learn how to take what's in the book and apply it to Tuesday. All things are possible to him who believes. Now she did it, so we know it doesn't have to be a he. We know we're talking about the male female aspect of consciousness. All things are possible to the mind who believes. Well, how do I believe? I've got to imagine. How can I believe without imagining? Believing what? I'm believing I'm getting this money. That's what I'm doing. And if you read the rest of it, you can do it yourself, right? But the point of it is, and maybe I yeah, put that in the link so everybody can read it. I mean, in the chat, so everybody can read that story for themselves. And there's other ones that you can read. But she did that herself. It didn't involve everything else. It didn't involve everyone else. It didn't involve who you know. It didn't involve what you had. It didn't involve because you didn't have it before or you messed it up last time or you're too old or you're this or you're that. Those are all of your own rules that you've put on your life. Those are all of your own breaks you've applied to your life. You've done that to yourself. Your, your higher mind doesn't have those hangups. But you go to your higher mind with a hanger. Talking about hang this up. Hey, can you hang this? Can you hang my debt up? You know, I owe a couple thousand. Can you? Yeah. Can you hang this doubt up? Hey, can you hang my anxiety up? Hey, can you hang my arthritis up? 
You go up in there hanging, moving in. Right? This, it's, it's what we do. This is what we do. And we wonder why we, we got it. So we went first to the book, then we went to another human book, so to speak. We went to an article that was written. And you could extract the truth out of both of them to get the psychological understanding of wisdom. This is what they were giving you is how to do something. It doesn't, you don't have to learn from one book on how to do it. But once you understand how to learn, once you understand how to get information, then you'll understand how to get it from anywhere or identify if it's in fact there. So when people ask me, well, how do you do this or how do you do that? This is how I do it. And it just takes a little time to develop the skill to learn how to extract information from any type of thing you have. So the next class, might as well just go into it. Next class, right? After this class, Saturday class is over. What are we doing next? Well, next, we're going to have a class called Wisdom Study. Veronica named it, so I wish I could take it. I would if she wasn't here, but she's here, so I got to give her the credit, right? <laughs> but she named it Wisdom Study. And it's essentially named Wisdom Study. It's a, it's a, we just named it different than Bible Study. But it's wisdom study in the sense of we are going to start with the Bible, just like we use those stories reading. Why? We started with the Bible because most of us came from there. Most of us built a lot of our beliefs on that, from that experience, right? So we're going to start with stories from there. But just like today, we're going to use different articles, different books to learn how to extract wisdom from documents so that we can apply what it is we learn from the people who know how to think. So that you can get $100 exactly and get it this week from somebody you didn't know exists, somebody who heard of you and came to you and offered you a job. And you weren't out there applying for six weeks thinking that, but that's your assumption that you think you have to do that. So that's what you're doing. And then you th what you think you have to do and the way you think that's going to go is how it goes. Because in the beginning is your word, is your awareness, is what you think and how you think it's going to go. And then at the end, you're like, I don't know why it's taking so long. That's the outcome of what you're thinking. How could it, would it say there's not anything made that was made without this? Without this, this is the way everything happens to you. To me, to you, to us, this is how it happens. So that is going to be our next class. We'll talk about it at the end, but that's what it, that's what the wisdom study is. It's learning how to take information from one thing, whether it's the Bible, like I said, we'll start there. And we're just going to pick different stories to understand exactly how to extract, to develop the skill on how to extract information from any type of book. I don't care if it's a Time magazine. I don't care if it's an article from your local newspaper for you to learn how to what is really being said so you can make conscious decisions on what is a rule or a law. We're making rules, laws, and wondering why we ain't ruling and why we're being ruled. So that's what that class is going to be. It's going to be the same time. We'll get into it later, but that's the point. What makes your what is what is she she spoke earlier in the right corner, right back corner. Um right here, right under Michelle. On her thing that says goddesses from iPhone. Yes. So I don't know the name. Goddesses iPhone. Who is Can that? you speak? All right. I'm, I'm here. Okay. Let me ask you a question. This is for everybody, but I'm talking to her. But this is for everybody. I'm just using her as an example. What makes where you live, right? Your house. What makes what makes your house your house? I guess because I worked hard and got it. Okay. But what makes it your house? What makes it your residence? I don't know. That's good. That's okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. I got okay. it. Okay. Let's see. 
Go okay, ahead. before I got it, I dreamed about it, and then I worked. I went through the process, and I worked hard and got it. Mm, yes, but no. Well, I'm asking you. So, okay, so today, let's say you said when you when you got in here earlier, you said you went to I think the store and you went to work out and everything like that, right? Oh, that wasn't her. Okay, oh, that was somebody else. Yeah. That was all right. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, all right, that's fine. Doesn't matter. All right. So today, are you going to go somewhere today? Yeah, I just got back from walking. You just got back. Okay. So you went somewhere else today, right? Yes. So so what makes your house your house? What makes that your residence? What does that mean? Because I live here. Okay. What does that mean? You living there, what does that mean? That is mine. Okay. What else? What what mm. makes it yours? What's what's different than where you went? How's that different from where you went? Um, because my things are here. Okay, now we're getting closer. So, what makes it your house? I claimed it. Okay, what else? I don't know. Okay, wonderful. Okay, good. All right. Let's see here. Um, who else? Who else can I put? Is it because she personalized it? Okay. How can you do that? You chose uh, it? You personalize it? What gives you the authority to do that? What what is like why did you do that? Why did why would you personalize it? Because she laid claim to it. Because you laid claim to it. Okay. And by laying claim to it, what, what, then what? Her name is on the documents. Yes. So yeah, she knows. It. Okay. So here's what I'm saying to you out of all the places, out of all the places, all of you could go after this call. If everyone went somewhere right now, you're all where you are. Let's just say you're all at home. And let's say you all went somewhere. Doesn't matter where you went. Bef and let's just say, and then at the end of the day, so right now you're at home, then you go somewhere and then you come back. Where did you come from and where are you going back to? Home. I went out into the world and then I came back home. So what makes it home? Because that's the place I come back to. That's the place you come back to. Yeah, but you go to you come back to work too. That's so my that's my it, safe that's like my safe space. That's that's my space. What makes it your safe space? I declare you, I declare how it works. And that's okay. Who else? I don't say because you claimed it. You said it's yours. You're, you okay. But what, so I see Monique said a refuge. What makes it a refuge? What makes what gives you dominion? You do. Yeah, because it's your so the point is because what makes something comfortable is familiarity what makes it familiar is the fact that you come from it and go to it every single day pretty much more often than anywhere else that's what makes it different than work work is five days a week home is you're there every day whether you go to work or not you're at home whether you go somewhere else or not H home is the constant home is your constant everything else is a ver is a variable that's what a home is it's the thing you come from and go back to. No matter how many places you go during the day, you're coming back. No matter if you go on vacation, you're coming back. Before you went on vacation, you left from there. When you woke up, you wake up there. When you go to sleep, you go to sleep there. Most often, that is your constant. All the other stuff, going to sleep in a hotel, going on vacation, going to spend a night at your family's house, out of town, going to work, going to the mall. Those are just, those are variables. But they don't give you refuge. Nobody got dominion in the mall. Nobody, nobody can claim their office at work like it's theirs. And you there five days a week. What makes home home is it's the place you come, it's the place you come from and return to most often. And what I'm telling you is just like there's a physical home, there is a psychological home. There is a mental place that you occupy most often. And all the characters of the book, let's say in the Bible, are 
are examples of that. They are they are the people that they're named because they are reflections of psychological states. They are the, they are the place that they return to most often in their mind. You have a place that's returned to most often in your mind. Just like you have a house that you return to. You have a home. And so from home, you get dressed. Your home is your refuge. Your home is what you claim. Well, guess what? You have a psychological equivalent of that. You are claiming yourself to be something constantly. You are returning, you are leaving and returning to the place you claim to be constantly. And wherever that is, is what your life looks like. Just like wherever that is, is what your house looks like. So what do you say? You decorate it. Your name is on the documents. Well, isn't the name, isn't your name, haven't you named your body? Haven't you named your identity? That's not a place. That's a psychology. It's a belief about who you are. That's not a place. You carry that belief with you everywhere you go. Just like you have a home that you come from and go to every day or most often more than any other place, that's what makes it your home. You have a state of mind that you that, that is called a home. You have a state of mind that you are occupying, that you come from and go to most often. You look around your physical world, starting with your body, that is where, that is where you live. That is where you live and how you're living. Just like when you say, I'm going back to the house, that's a city and a neighborhood and a zip code and a state. It's a state. It's a, it is a location from which you dwell, from which you answer the phone, take a bath, eat, shave, talk to your friends, go to sleep, exercise. You do everything from there. You're coming from it, going back to it. It's, it's where you live your life from. In mind, you have the same thing. You deal with life from a state of psychology. That state of psychology is named Leslie, is named Cisco, is named Sparkle Bailey, is named Della. What you have to do now is just like your physical house, you have to start decorating. Because that's where you're living. When somebody calls and gives you quote unquote bad news, you're dealing with it from your physical house, from the couch when you answer the phone. You're dealing with it from the couch of your mind when you hear it. You're dealing with it from where you live. That is why your problems are your problems. That's why your answers are your answers because they're based on where you live. We're all here together, but we don't all live together. We're all here on this planet together. We don't all think alike. And the way you think is just like the house you live in. It is a state from which you come from and return to most often. That is dictating how you do. That's where your things are. That's where your emotions are. That's where your feelings and thoughts are. That's where your beliefs are. That's where your laws are. That's where your rules are. That's where your assumptions are. That's where your fears are. That's where your dreams are. That's where your nightmares are. They're all in your mind, just like everything is in your house. That is why, that is why I give you tools and don't tell you exactly what to do. Because everybody's journey is different. It's the law is the same, but you have to know how to make it work for you. You have to understand it and then make it your own sauce. You have to make it your own way of applying it. It doesn't mean you get to change how it works. You just get to know, you get to know how to work it for you. I like to script. I like to affirm. I like to do affirmations. I like to imagine. I like to just talk to myself all day. I like to, whatever, you have to figure out the way that it works for you. As long as you get it done. How you do it is personal, but the outcome is not. If you don't, there will be an outcome. That ain't personal. If you do, there'll be an outcome that ain't personal, but you can choose how you personally do it. Just like people count on their fingers, people use a calculator, some people do it in their mind. As long as you get the answer right, that's all that matters. That is where you get to express your individuality. Find the way, we'll talk about this next week, find the best way for you to be thinking the way you should, for you to be thinking for, in your favor, for you to count out $100 that week, for somebody to call you and offer you a job, for you to imagine yourself being the way you want to be, for things being the way you want. She didn't wait for somebody. She didn't know anybody. She didn't pray with anybody. She didn't ask anybody. 
She didn't tithe to anybody. She didn't burn no candles. She didn't do anything but say, what do I want? She went within herself and she got it. So then why can't you do the same? The law is no respecter of persons. The ability to do that is no respecter. If you do it, you'll get the same. So what does it take for you? Do you need to write it down? Do you need to say it to yourself a hundred times? Do you need to walk around the block? Do you, whatever you do, what, whatever you tell yourself is true is true. What make it work for you, but do it, work it. That's why I don't tell you what I do necessarily. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm telling you that you have to do it. In the beginning was the word. Your lips are either your salvation or your snare. They're either elevating you or you are being, you are being lowered. But you're doing that to you. You're just using other people to do it. That's why I always tell you, nobody can do anything to you. You just use other people to do it. You use everything in your physical world to get you what you want, including what you don't want. She used, her higher mind used. When I say you do, I'm not saying Leslie does. I'm saying the being that Leslie knows she now is. Which is why she's, I'm not going to, I'm just using this example and I don't mean it literally, which is why she stopped crying and whining and everything else and started popping because you realize that I am. What do you mean? There ain't nobody else. I am. And just, and that lady showed you in the story, I am. And guess what? She showed you I am is enough. I am is more than enough, is more than capable to get the job done for whatever you want to do. You don't need to ask anybody else. You don't need everyone's permission. You don't need everyone's bright ideas. You don't need that. And a lot of the times you don't get it because you listen to everyone else but you. You can't even hear yourself. The only thoughts you have are everyone else's. You're living everyone else's life in your body. And you wonder why you crazy and feel crazy and look crazy. You got 15 identities in you. Your mom telling you what your dad said, what your brother said, what your sister said, what your mentor said, what your boss said, what your significant other said, what your kids said. You got everybody talking. You got 15 people in you. And none of those 15 are you. They just on you. You got to carry them on. You ain't heard yourself and you don't know how long. The only time you hear yourself is when you're afraid. How am I going to get this done? I don't know how you're going to live everybody else's life and yours. I don't know how to do I can't answer that question for you. I don't know how you're going to do it. But I would say, don't, I, I don't, I don't know how that's possible to do. I ain't got no good advice for you. Probably the best advice is don't. She sat up there and decided what she wanted for herself. And she made it happen. Who else made it happen? Was who else made that happen? That's, that's who you are. She is you. She is you. If you do the same thing she did, you'll get the same thing. Could have asked for more. Every day, start talking, start telling you something. I could have asked for more. I could have asked for more. I could have got better than that. I could have asked for more. I could have got more sales. I could have got there faster. I could have got, and start making that more your standard. Not a statement of dissatisfaction, but an opportunity to raise your standard. I could have got more. I could have got more money. I could have got there faster. I could have got there easier. I could have had an even better client. I could have I could have even more clients. This could be even more fun. And start raising your standard. You're not upset. You're not complaining. You're realizing there's more. Why not get it? Or if but if you just want to have enough, then that means you shouldn't be clearing your plate at a restaurant. Then just have just enough. Pay for the whole thing, but just eat until that's it. Don't eat the whole thing. And definitely don't ask for no. Uh, can I refill your iced tea? No, I've had enough. But I'm gonna pay for the whole thing. But I, I just, I, but I'm just practicing gratitude. So I'm not gonna just cut off half. Just give me half the plate. Yeah, I want three. I want uh, two enchiladas, but just give me one. Well, you know, I have to pay for Yeah, I'm gonna pay for the whole thing, but I'm practicing gratitude. There's starving people in Africa. Like, we, like this is, yeah, you apply this in any other area, you would see how stupid you sound. It's ridiculous. That's not who we are, man. That's ridiculous. No, we are great. Within us is everything. Go ahead. Dallas said, go to the lake of success with a teaspoon. Yeah. Talking about, I just, I just, I'm humble. I just want to practice a little humility. I don't want to take it all. 
I don't want to take it all. Yeah, it's like, come on, man. That's what it's, who else is it for? Who else is a rainbow for? Who else is wealth for? Who else is a hundred dollars for? Who else is your business for? Who else is your, it's yours. You're God, you can't steal from yourself. You do know that, right? You know, you can't steal from yourself, right? Like, you can't do that. You can't take from yourself. It's all yours. Ask for more. Raise your standard and your expectation of who you are and what you should have as a result of that. That's what we're saying. We're not saying we're not. I'm grateful for I'm grateful for all kinds of things. I was walking up, I was like, man, I'm so glad my mom, you know, bought a computer for my daughter. You know, she did this. My other, my my daughter's other grandmother did some things. I'm grateful for those things. I didn't have to do them. You think I'm not practicing gratitude? Boy, I'm higher than Peter Pan. <laughs> I'm out there, boy, the twinkle toes like the twinkle fairy, right? Like, of course I am. I'm grateful that, that I didn't have to do that. I'm grateful that I could think my way into success and all the world means me well and treats me kindly and this and that and the other and seeing my $100 come in. I'm great. You think I'm not practicing gratitude all the time? Because I'm winning. I'm not practicing no full gratitude of eating one enchilada pan for three. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. You'll be, you'll be practicing gratitude for real when you win it. Meaning you're like, you have something to, yeah, you're like, yeah, right? Leslie, when you out there selling your soap, Veronica's like, man, Leslie's thing going off. Aren't you grateful? Is anybody, you have to, do you have to conjure up some gratitude? Not at all. Well, I got a hold, I got a, Hold my no, right? When your business is popping off, you anybody got to figure out how to be grateful? Your whole body is singing. Your whole being is illumined and enlightened and inspired. And if you would just focus on that, you'd see more of it. What you what you are the state of mind you're occupying is your home. It's just like your physical home. Whatever you keep telling yourself is coming because you're operating your life from that. So when the phone call says, or, or when you get a flat tire, the state of mind does it. The class, when we had class and I signed that homework to be doing one day, you, you could, yeah, that was a, for you to get a look at your mind. What'd you say the first 15 seconds? What was your initial reaction to life when I said all that gotta be read in a day and a half? That's where you operating from. Oh man, oh, but he don't understand. Well, I gotta, I gotta, okay. So you just went to a hundred ways you couldn't do it. Right? So it's the same thing. It's the same thing over and over. Where you live is your is why you react to life the way you react. Because it's where you're coming from. And in, and in this class and all the stuff that we do here in the Mental Academy is to get you to choose where you live in your mind, just like you choose where you live in your body, meaning in your neighborhood. If you had all the money in the world, would you live where you live? Well, when you know who you are, would you think like you think? It's the same thing. We've all been someplace on, on our 4th of July or New Year's Eve. We've heard bottles popping, guns popping, fireworks popping, but all the popping is based on where you are. There's different type of pops, different types of places, right? Pop, pop, pop. We know what some of that is, and depending on where we are, we know what that is, right? If I'm in Beverly Hills in Southern California, I know it's not that. I know pap, pap, pap ain't that. But if I'm over some other places, no. Nah. Yeah, come on, man. That's what it is. <laughs> right? Yeah. Life is happening to you from where you from where you are. Life is happening to you from where you are. It's not happening to you, it's happening through you. Really. You're the projector. <laughs> your consciousness is projecting through your body, creating life, creating the life that you're experiencing. All right? So Pop, pop, pop means different things depending on where you are. So meaning the way you deal with life is different based on where you're dealing with it from. 
based on your resources, based on where you are, right? So all of this was to say that. All of this to say that in the beginning was the word, in the beginning, in the beginning of every second of every moment of your life. Every second is a new beginning. In the beginning, what do you want your word to be? What do you want your consciousness to be? Who, who do you want? How do you want God to act? That's who you are. How are you acting? Right? Get your envelope out. Get your hundred million. Get your hundred dollars. Get your hundred million. Get your health. Get your wealth. Get your success. Get whatever it is your hundred dollars is to you. Whatever that hundred is to you. Get that. Get that. It's yours. It's rightfully yours. You couldn't think it. You wouldn't want it. It already exists. You don't have to create it. That lady already existed. She didn't have to create her. She just had to go into her own mind, assume her own desire, and that it was so. Oh, and it brought the lady. The lady already existed. Your desire already exists. You don't have to create a million dollars any more than she had to create that lady. She didn't. So when people last thing, and that's why I said yesterday on the call, I said, when you say, she said she won a hundred dollars. What if she had to ask herself how she was going to get it? Do you think she would have went through that whole process after that? No, she would have been stuck right there. It would have stopped her. If she knew how to get it, she wouldn't have quote unquote prayed, let's say. She wouldn't have been there if she already knew. So then why would you pray and then ask yourself how you're going to do it? That doesn't make any sense. You pray to assume that it's done. You pray to get a different shift in your mind that you are now that person who has it, or who is it, who's doing it. That's what the prayer for. That's what the imagining is for, the scripting, the affirming. It, it works your mind into the awareness of now being that. That's what that's for. If she would have said, well, okay, I've, I'm now a millionaire. Now, what steps am I going to take to become a millionaire? If I knew that, I wouldn't be doing that. I would have just been doing that. I don't know. So what is me asking myself going to do? It's not the guy that's going to do anything, but frustrate you and get you feeling like, oh, if I don't have an answer, how can I move forward? So if you don't move forward, guess what? The dream dies with it. But the dream doesn't need your help. Like I always tell you, just need your permission. What did she do to help? Last thing. What did she do to help? What did she do to help the lady? The lady came. What did she do? Did she give her a ride? Uh, did she buy her some flowers? What, what did she do? She didn't know the lady existed. The lady called her. The lady came to see her. The lady gave her a job. The lady gave her the money. What did she do beyond what she did? Yes, she did the only thing you have to do. But I'm talking about in the physical world. What did she do? She didn't do anything. And everything that the lady did for her, the, la the lady who needed it couldn't have done any of those things. How are you going to give a ride to somebody you don't know exists? How are you going to make somebody give you a job? How do you make them give you the exact money that you asked for and they didn't know you asked for 100? How can you make it up? She couldn't have done all those things. So when people tell you you have to do all these things, how? Based on what? How am I going to find a person I don't know exists? What phone number am I going to call? What's the area code? And what job does she have? And how is she going to give it to me? Why would she go, like, how are you going to do all those things that happen? Go for it. Uh, Marlon asked, don't we still have to put ourselves in position or alignment to achieve what the mind has created? Okay, what did she do? She, she went through her imagination. She was in the hotel. Is that right? When she went, okay, where did the lady call? Where did she call? The hotel. The hotel. So where did, what position did she put herself in? Like, where did she go? You said we had to put ourselves in a, in a in position or alignment. With who? She didn't know the lady existed. What, what position was she going to put herself in? Like, I mean, th th this is, this is, we, we can talk this talk. I'm all with it. Hey, coach. Yes. So maybe um, just by surrendering to her thoughts and saying that I declare this and I want this and I imagine this, isn't that like taking action? She took action to say that I, I don't even know how it's going to happen, but I know that's what I want. Yes, that's why Leslie said she took the only action she needed, which is the assumption that it's so, because you don't know who this lady is. She never met her. So how can you put yourself in alignment with someone you don't even know exists? Why would you move? You don't know this person exists, right? So, so what you're talking about, yes, you now assume you are. When you assume you are, what you're doing is you are taking your, you're, you're using your human mind 
to assume that you are something and you're saying, I'm assuming I'm this. Here's my order. I'm now giving it to the waiter or the waitress. I'm giving this to God, to my higher mind. My higher mind knows what's in the kitchen. My higher mind can cook this. My higher mind knows this lady exists. So I'm, but I don't. But my higher mind doesn't. I and my higher mind are one. So whatever my higher mind knows, it can give me, it can, but it only can give me what I ask it for. So when I decide to be, my higher mind does so I can have. You get it because God got it. God already got it. God already knows this lady. Your higher mind and that lady are one. Your mind and her mind are one. You're just separated by identities, but you're one. So when you assume you are something, then your higher mind says, this is the person, this is the physical reflection of that. I'm going to use myself as her to give myself as me this thing. It's all my money. I just a belief that you just have a belief. I'll just use the example. You just have a belief you're different than Leslie, but you're not. But the belief that you're different than Leslie is what we call humanity. But it's not actually true. That's why that she didn't have to know that lady for her to come looking for. Her. Because that same mind knows where the lady in the hotel was and knows where the lady who had the job was and brought them together. So your consciousness knows. That's why it says all these things will be added to you. Seek first. Go inside yourself. Pray. Meaning, just pray. Meaning, go inside yourself. Assume you are that. She said, I want $100 exactly. That was her assumption. And she stayed with it. She just said, that's it. And then how can you put yourself in alignment? Where are you going to go? Who are you going to call? Who you know? There's You don't know that in your higher mind, in your, in your human mind. That's why you're praying, so to speak. That's why you're assuming. But that's, but that's why I said you don't have to do that because if you did, it wouldn't have worked. It's a law, the law, not rules, not humans' rules. You have to put yourself in alignment. You got to go find somebody. You got to put yourself out there. Nobody will see you if you're at home. She was in the hotel. Somebody came to her. Because that's what it took for her. So it's according to your faith, be it unto you. So if you assume you have to go do that, then you're going to have to do that. But that's your rule. That's not a law. Because if it was a law, that lady would have had to go out and beat the pavement, get on Instagram 50 times, get funding and do all the other stuff that people tell you you have to do. But that that just may be their personal experience. It doesn't have, that's not a law. The law is according to your faith, be it unto you. Her faith was, I have a hundred dollars. She didn't condition it. She didn't bring her own hangers with all kinds of other doubts and anxieties and what if, and I got to do, and she didn't do that. That's why she didn't go through that. Look at what she got and why she got it. Go back. You guys all go back into this when it's over. Sometime this week, go back into it and look at the story, analyze it, break it down. She didn't complicate it. She said, I want a hundred dollars. And every bit of detail was to herself. And every detail she did within herself that lady did. How could that not be God talking to God then? How could it not? How could the lady know she wanted hundred dollars? How could the lady know to call her? Why would the lady call her? Why would she offer her a job? Why would she come calling her? Why? You couldn't put yourself there. The lady didn't put herself there physically. She only put herself there mentally and her mentality put her where she needed to be. That's my point. That's the law. Now, you guys can make up a whole bunch of rules should you choose, but that ain't the law. Just understand that the rules will rule you. They'll get you sooner or later. They just will. They'll get you. They'll get you sooner or later. The law is easy. What does it say? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. Look how easy it was for her. How easy could it have got? She didn't have to do nothing. But what she did, what she did was the doing, to your point. Yes. What she did was the doing, to your point. And to Leslie's point, it's the only doing you need. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. That's the law. Okay. Any okay. any other questions, comments, or anything else before we get to the end? I got a question. Yes. What's the follow-on from the ask? So what's I have. The what? What's the what? What's the next step? So I have affirmations that I, you know, am listening to, and thank you so much for the parrot app because I use that every single day. Oh, um. But then, you know, I'm asking for a thousand dollars a day in sales. You know, I'm asking for for my better my business to be better and get better, and things are moving in that direction without a doubt. But I'm also showing up and doing the work of fulfilling those orders and and keeping up with the consistency that needs to be there. So I guess my question is: Yes, 
I, I have to have the ask and I understand that and I see how it's all correlating. But I also feel like there's my actions are helping that ask continue to to build, continue mm -hmm. to, you know, to mm -hmm. grow and flower. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. that, am I correct? Like I, I. Yes, all of your actions are being governed by consciousness. Consciousness governs all actions. So the point now is not, do you act or not? The point is, do your actions match what you desire to be conscious of? Because there's a whole lot of people, there's a whole lot of people working that don't have no business or aren't successful. So Perfect. actions don't guarantee outcomes, not the ones you necessarily want. Because if they did, everybody could just act and be a millionaire. Everybody could just act and be, right? So then everybody's acting out of their consciousness. So then when you have the consciousness of being of making a thousand dollars a day, then your consciousness is going to govern your actions. So you're gonna, so now you're a thousand dollar a day worker. You have thousand dollars a day ideas. You have thousand dollars a day actions and activity. Thousand dollars a day clients. Your, your, your consciousness is always governing your actions. When somebody says, I'm going to the store. Well, you did something based on consciousness. It's no different. You're always acting out what you're thinking. So when you decide to think I make a thousand dollars a day, for example, that doesn't matter. We're just using because you said that. But if you say I make a thousand dollars a day, you can make ten thousand dollars a day. It's just going to change your actions to reflect what it is you're thinking. Ten thousand is going to mean more of something. So it may mean more clients. It just may mean more orders. It may mean you something will increase to reflect that. It just may mean it doesn't mean you have to work harder necessarily, but something is going to shift that's going to reflect that. Just like you don't have to worry about that. Just like the lady didn't have to worry about that lady. That lady didn't know she existed. So you can't worry about somebody you don't know even exists. So you don't have to worry about that. Your thousand dollars or your ten thousand dollars, whatever you're asking for, is going. Your physical actions are always being guided by that. In the beginning was the word, right? In the beginning. So in the beginning, what is your word? I make a thousand dollars a day, for example. I make a thousand dollars a day. I make ten thousand dollars a day. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So a thousand dollars will be with you. The same was God. <laughs> That's what it is. So it's automatic. You don't have to worry about what actions you're doing. Assume the actions you're doing are a reflection of your assumption. That's why you can assume everything is working for my highest and best good. Because if that's your assumption, then you could get a flat tire. Everything is working for my highest and best good. There's, it doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't change what I say. I'm assuming that everything that is physically happening is a reflection of my assumption. And that's actually true. So what we're not doing here is we're, we're not trying to worry about actions. What we're concerned about is focusing what are we conscious of that are governing our actions so that when things happen in life, we understand that we don't change what we think or what we say. We assume that what's happening here is a reflection of what we're thinking and saying. So therefore, if what I'm thinking and saying is good, then I'm not going to even assume this is bad. I won't let because that can't be true. Pop, pop, pop. I'm in Beverly Hills. I know they ain't shooting. Right. I know they ain't shooting. Now, but guess what? And in the, in the, if I'm somewhere else, I'm not, I don't know they're shooting, but I'm assuming they're shooting because of where I am. See that the sound is not that different, but because of where I am, I'm assuming I didn't see, I ain't seen a, my best English. I ain't seen a bullet flying through the air, but a pop, 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 and I'm in the trap. I'm assuming it's a bullet in a gun in Beverly Hills is the same pop, pop, pop as fireworks. I'm assuming I haven't seen either one. I just heard a noise, but from where I am, that noise is assumed to be. From where you are in your mind, that flat tire is assumed to be, or that thousand dollars and is assumed to be, or what are you assuming? But it's based on where you're living in your mind, your state of consciousness. If you're assuming in your mind you have decorated a thousand dollars a day, guess what? It doesn't matter if somebody didn't buy anything you today from you today. So what? I still made a thousand dollars a day. I made because guess what? Today is today. Today happened, so I made a thousand dollars. I don't okay. care. I don't need proof that bullets are flying by. I'm in the trap. I'm ducking. I don't need proof that this is fireworks. I'm in Beverly Hills. It doesn't occur to me that there could be, right? It doesn't occur to me in that state of mind. I don't need proof to assume, but I'm always assuming from where I believe I am. Does that make sense? A thousand percent. Perfect sense. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, anyone else?
I was going to say um, the story of the woman reminded me of a book I read, um, Outwitting the Devil, Okay. when Napoleon, when Napoleon Hill was talking about um, he had to go to, uh, I think he had to go to like, New York or something, and he needed he needed fifty his his subconscious mind told him he needed fifty dollars and he said ask for fifty dollars and he went to his thing went to his brother in law and he asked his brother in law for fifty dollars and his brother in law was like you know what uh, you're going to New York you're gonna need some more money I'm gonna give you a hundred and he said no nah, I don't want a hundred I just want the fifty so he said he was just following the directions of his subconscious mind that's what that story reminded me of Mm -hmm. -hmm. Mm 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 -hmm. M
Saturday, the third July thirteenth. Um, we're starting wisdom study. So mindset Saturday, which is what we're doing today. The last class we're having is next week. And we've been doing Mindset Saturday for about a year and a half now. We've been doing it for free. Um, and, you know, it's just a, it, it, a new idea popped up. Coach Lucky had a new idea, and, um, and we're doing it. We also have a club that meets during the week. Um, if you guys are interested in that, I'll put the link in the chat. Um, and so Wisdom Study is going to meet every Saturday, the same time, it's going to be 49 a month. For those who are in the mentality club, you get about, it's, a, it's about 60% off if you're in the mentality club. Um, so just registration is going to happen soon. I think we're going to open registration maybe like the 1st of July. We're not, we're not starting registration yet, but you can subscribe to, to, to be in the know and to get the emails once we're ready. Um, let me put the link of the club and I don't know if I did I get everything? Yeah, it's good. And the whole point of the class is just to do what we did today. You take something, you can take something from one book, you can take something from an article, and you can extract the wisdom out of it to apply it to your life on a Tuesday, on a Thursday, for $100, or for your health, or for money, or for whatever else you want. But to understand how to think and how to use information that you that you are looking at and see if there's anything in it that you can use and that you can take. We're starting with the Bible just because most of us grew up on it, but most of us don't know what it's talking about really or how to read it. And so I'm just taking a couple stories to develop the skills, right, that we can use, right, to learn how to extract the wisdom out of it that the people who wrote it are trying to get, right, or were trying to give us, I'm sorry. And then, but like we did today, we'll use articles, we'll use books, we'll use other things, but just to continue to learn how to renew our mind and how to develop that faculty and to say what we want, to leave the hangers at home, right? Like we're talking about and to go straight to our higher mind and be able to get, realize that everything is within us. So we're just using all these different mediums, right? And just breaking things down step by step by step by step, like I did the last couple of weeks for you to have an understanding of of how to extract information from something, the wisdom from something and apply it to your life in a way you understand, right? So that's what the wisdom study is for. It's kind of like our, our version of the Bible study, so to speak. We're starting with the Bible, but we're not staying there. We'll be using a bunch of different things um, to basically lead us to the wisdom that is whatever we're uh, looking at. So that's what it's for. Um, um, no, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't have registration open yet. We will. Um, but in the meantime, you can subscribe and then you'll get um, you'll get the emails for next week when we go live um, and any information we have to share. Um, there's a few of us here who are in the week, weekday clubs. The weekday clubs are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have replays. And then we also have a community app where, you know, you guys have access to Coach Lucky. Um, and the weekday classes, the club is 79 a month. If you're in the club, the wisdom study will be about 20 bucks a month. So that's about 60% off. Um, and yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well. You know, thank you all for coming. If anybody doesn't have any other questions or anything, thank you all for coming. Uh, nobody has any questions, anything? Just making sure before we go. All right. Um, thank you all for coming as always. Let me run my mouth, lose a couple pounds up here. <laughs> and uh, next week is the last week of the Saturday Mindset. So invite your friends, family, dogs, cats, birds, everybody else. We are going to uh, just, I'm going to give you some tools, tips, tricks, um, and techniques basically to help you keep your mind straight. Um, and then the last hour will kind of be like, like talking after graduation. It'll be like a family reunion, just laughing, reflecting on our time that we've had here for the last year and a half. And, you know, and then we're going to move on to, you know, the wisdom study on the weekends, the stuff during the week and a bunch of other stuff that, you know, we have going on. So yeah. Next week will be the last week. So make sure, you know, you dress yourself up real good. It's graduation. We graduate next week. Okay, we'll be in Atlanta the 4th of July weekend. So um, if anyone's going to be out that way, um, I can only be met at a restaurant. Coach Lucky. Okay. okay. I'm only interested in the food. I can only be met at a restaurant. Okay. 
He wants to eat, and that's what we shall do. <laughs> so if you guys want to eat with us, we'll be in Atlanta um, the 4th of July week uh, weekend. Yeah. yeah, specifically fried chicken. That's what he wants. Yeah, greens. Me too. Yeah, and peach cobbler. Those are like my three things I got to add. And he wants the chicken and waffles. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, hey, thank you all. I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful day. We practice. Go out there and play. And we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you, Vero. Thank, thank you all. Peace. Bye, y'all.